Next up, we got Ryan Schumacher. He's going to give us a little speech about principles, which I think is important. Like I talked about earlier, too often we elect people who claim to support something, who on the campaign trail say things like limited government, tax cuts, spending cuts, socialism, and then get into government and promote big government, big taxes, big spending, with all sorts of excuses that they think excuses it. We need to get back to principles, and when people will not be principled, they don't need to be in office. Ryan? Woo! Shrouds! Thanks, Rob, and thanks for all of you for coming today. Today, we are a part of a concerned group of friends, family, acquaintances, and strangers who, say, who share something in common. I would also say that there has not been another 4th of July holiday in our history where we shared as much in common with our forefathers as we do today. They too loved their country, in their case England, but there came a time when they could no longer accept the burdens placed upon them by an overreaching government. We are here today because we all feel like they did. I am here today to tell you why I think we are in this mess and how I think we get out of it. It is not an original idea, but was rather predicted by the greatest American, our first president, George Washington. Washington said this of political parties, they are likely, in the course of time and things, to become potent engines by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will be enabled to, sub to subvert the power of the people and to seize for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engines which have lifted them to undeserved power. How could Washington predict the major problem facing our country over 200 years ago? The answer is that he and our other forefathers realized that human nature never changes. Washington knew that the party system would result in men choosing party over principle, sending America down the wrong path. This has turned into one big political game, a game we people here today are no longer willing to play. Woo! We see examples of party over principle weekly. Since the Tea Parties of April 15th, we have seen Senator Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania switch parties because he was going to lose in a runoff primary. Another example is the Speaker of House politicizing torture while being briefed by the CIA on those same very, on those same very interrogation techniques years before and then lying about it. We have seen these types of games played before, over and over in our lifetimes. We have one party who believes that a crisis should never go to waste, and another party who says, vote for us because we're not as bad as the other guys. <laughs> the people attending these tea parties have not left their parties. Their parties have left them. Woo! Yay! We must continue to work hard to convince others, as Washington believed, that partisanship is a lost cause for America. One of the games our elected officials play is a game of distraction, always pointing the finger at the other party while each of them take us further and further away from our Constitution. Do you think John Adams would have ever thought we would have 60,000 pages of tax code? No! Do you think Thomas Jefferson would have ever accepted the amount of debt that we placed upon our children? No! no. Do you think James Madison would have the federal government investing in General Motors? No! Do you think Benjamin Franklin would have created a Ponzi scheme like Social Security and then <laughs> robbed it blind? No. no! And finally, do you think our forefathers would have ever voted upon a bill that went through Congress without reading it like they did with cap and trade? No! no. All these things are allowed because over time our leaders have turned the Constitution upside down. <laughs> They've convinced people that it wasn't their fault, but rather it was those other people from across the political aisle and vice versa. If we just elect the right party, then all the problems will be solved, they say. Meanwhile, years pass with the same old arguments made over and over, and the only thing getting accomplished is the same people who never solve anything are getting reelected. I wasn't even born yet during the gas lines of the early 70s, yet I stand before you 30 years plus years later and we still don't have a national energy policy. Principled people like you and me would have solved our energy problems decades ago.
We must stop making excuses for an elected official just because they represent what we think is the correct party. They either believe in the Constitution or they don't. If they don't, we must find those that do. I believe the Tea Party movement we see here today is the beginning of a new, old way of thinking. It is an independent, responsible, America first way of thinking, where elected officials serve the public rather than serve their particular careers. They believe that they repeat the lies and distortions often enough, it will eventually become the truth. But we prefer they say what they mean and mean what they say. We were the former silent majority who before the Tea Parties never took part in protests, but we could see that our liberties at that time were being trampled upon. Our pivot point became the first TARP bill by then President Bush. It was confirmation that we could not trust either party to govern within acceptable boundaries. We are here today to say we would rather lose an election based upon the principles that made America great than win by trampling on our Constitution. We want leaders who serve a couple of terms then believe it is their citizen they believe it is another citizen's turn to serve just as Washington did. Uh -huh. If two yep. terms was good enough for our first president, then two terms should be good enough for anyone who serves. Yes. Ben Franklin insisted that serving should not be a full-time job or turned into a career. Most of our elected officials would have us believe that they stay in office so long because they just love to serve all of us. <laughs> While the truth is they are addicted to the power, the money, and the prestige. Yep. Yeah. Woo! Together, you and I, through reason, debate, and the wisdom of our forefathers, must convince enough people to join us. Together, we can and will elect leaders of character and integrity. Men and women who tell us what they believe in and live up to those words. Oh, I got we have elected the same officials serving in Washington for 30 to 40 years, and not one of them deserves another day in office. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! We can make a difference. We already have. Those who call themselves independent are growing, while those calling themselves Democrat or Republican are shrinking. We should not ask each other if we are Democrats or Republicans, but rather, do you believe in the Constitution as written, or do you believe as the progressive President Woodrow Wilson believed that we should abandon our blind devotion to the Constitution in favor of the ruling elite? I say no. With more events like this, we will grow louder and get larger. We are going to bring honor and principles, not games, back to politics. Partisanship created our problems, but constitutional principles will solve them. George Washington would have agreed it is time to throw the cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men out. I might add that they are also arrogant, out of touch, hypocritical, and dishonorable. We can do better, and we will if we continue with the enthusiasm we see here today. Stand up, America, and take your country back. Together, let's work to elect people who put America, responsibility, and the Constitution first, and also who put our children's future first. Thank you all for coming and letting your voices be heard. I like seeing all these people who will live up to the words of one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan Schumacher, let's hear it again. Woo! On principles. A little bit of housekeeping here before we go. Danny Schmidt has not picked up his book yet. Is Danny Schmidt here? Hey! Right out here. <laughs> there he is, all right. That's all we needed to take care of, Danny. We wanted to make sure you got your book. All right, well, folks, that's it. That's your tea party. That's all we've got for you. It's been a great time. Thank you, it's sir. Been a pleasure. Take your enthusiasm here. Take it to the ballot box, folks. Things will not change until we stop voting for them, until we realize that big government isn't okay. It isn't okay when it benefits you individually, and it is okay when it benefits somebody else. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We're not going to change.